solve the mystery, we'll get a prize. We now want to solve the mystery of the lavish party. Well, I remember this case very well. I remember we were called to the residence of Aaron Quinn, the wealthy business owner from heaven, on August 8, 2015. Yes, his poor wife Trudy had found him dead in the chaise lounge by the pool. It was immediately obvious that he was killed elsewhere and put there to shroud the identity of his murderer. And it happened the night after their tenth wedding anniversary. The suspects are Barrett Green. Barrett was the Quinn's gardener, and he was hired before the Quinns were married. Miss Quinn used to tease Barrett about how he used to wear his rope as a belt until Mr. Quinn had asked him to stop. Barrett was sleeping on the job, and instead of firing him, Mr. Quinn cut his pay. Mr. Quinn still invited him to the anniversary party and told him that if he could prove that he was a hard worker, Mr. Quinn would bring his pay back to where it was. The two were seen having a heated discussion by the pool. Barrett put his hands up and left the party, and returned later with his hands visibly loose, but stayed to the end. <laughs> All right. Mr. Quinn was a great boss. He used to get regular raises every year, until she came, that is. He became weak and let a woman control him. Now, it's true, I fell asleep on the job, but what you don't know is that I had to take on two more jobs just to feed my family. And, well, I used to consider Mr. Quinn a friend on top of an employer until he let her make fun of the only belt that I could afford. Now, I came to the party to try and talk some sense into him, but he was being pig-headed, so, so I just left. But, but I got to thinking that, you know, we have a long history together, so I came back just to show him what a real friend was. What Barrett failed to mention was that he was constantly being warned about sleeping on the job. It seemed as though Barry was always making it seem that Miss Quinn was undermining her husband and his business. He never actually explained what happened to his belt. He had a key to the garage and 24-7 access to the property. Our next suspect, Clarence Jackson, affectionately known as Cadillac Jackson. He was Quinn's personal driver and friend. And we even was mentioned in Quinn's will that he Eve of Quinn's death, he would be given his entire fleet of Cadillacs. But on the night of the party, he was asked to take his inebriated guests home, and then it was his last night of employment. Hey, babe, how you doing? Gigolo. <laughs> Weasel. Savage. <laughs> Nothing but respect for Mr. Quinn. I was kept a bat in the car to protect his property and a towel to keep his seats nice and clean. I'll tell you though, it wasn't very nice of him when he told me that I had to drive his drunk friends home that night. I wasn't very happy because I never had to drive his drunk friends home before. After all my years of hard work, the icing on the cake, he told me this would be my last night of employment. Excuse I deserve better than that. I didn't kill him. But what Cadillac fails to mention is why he was terminated. See, Cadillac fancies himself a ladies' man. And Mr. Quinn had received a complaint from one of his female clients one time when he was driving her vehicle. So he had installed tiny cameras in all the cars. And he discovered that Cadillac had done this with many women. And when he had presented him with the recordings, he became immediately furious. And Mr. Quinn had asked him to return the keys to all the cars the morning after the party and to 
take his stupid bat with him. Two years after the Quinns were married, Miss Quinn gave birth to a baby boy. She began suffering with depression, so Mr. Quinn had hired a nanny, Maria May. About eight years later, they decided to put the boy into a boarding school, so Maria's services was no longer needed. About a week prior to her dismissal, Mr. Quinn invited her to the party. Excuse me. What do you mean I am a prime suspect, detective? The Quinns were always so good to me. It was a travesty to hear about Mr. Quinn's untimely death. Oh, and that poor boy, imagine having to grow up now without his father. For eight years, I cared for the Quinns. As a matter of fact, Mr. Quinn, he gave me this scarf himself as a token of appreciation for my guilty. For my services, of course. Services. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh, detective, you must understand, see, I cared for Queen Julia deeply. For eight years, I cared for that boy like he was one of my own. Eight years. That is, until it seemed one day my services were no longer required. Eight years I cared for that family. And Detective, I fear that Mr. Quinn must have treated someone so terribly, so vile, so awful, and so treacherous that things went a little too far, and perhaps that is why they precisely murdered him. Now, if you will. Excuse me. <coughs> Too far indeed. Mr. Quinn and Maria was having an affair. Mr. Quinn had stopped the affair when Miss Quinn became suspicious when she found out that Aaron had added Maria to the will. Maria became furious when she found out Miss Quinn made Aaron remove her from the will. Maria went shopping for the party and she brought two large gallons of food storage bags. She must have been expecting a lot of leftovers. Mr. Quinn had invited Maria to the party to continue the affair. He had also bought her a scarf to showcase his continued affection for her. Our next suspect, Travis Dooley, had been invited by Mrs. Quinn because she was impressed by his hard work ethic. And he had increased his visits from once a month to once a week. But Mr. Quinn hadn't noticed because he likes his pool to be very clean and completely spotless, and always with an ample supply of fresh, clean towels by the pool. But when he had found out that he wasn't just cleaning the pool, he had planned to fire him after he found a replacement. The truth is, I cared for the whole family. Mm. Apparently, Mr. Quinn didn't know that Mrs. Quinn had asked me to come on the other days to do some duties, some odd jobs. <laughs> that was true. I was angry when Mrs. Quinn told me that Mr. Quinn had intended to replace me. Imagine that, replace me? But I didn't wish to kill him. As a matter of fact, I had intended to tell Mr. Quinn what was happening to him at the party. But Mrs. Quinn kept me, she kept me, you know, let's just say she kept me busy. As a matter of fact, she told 
told me. She told me that Mr. Quinn would have discussion with the don't the gardener, her. excuse poor boy. But then he would have been furious and not very receptive. So I just continued with my my duties, <laughs> mm. uh, and I did. I did remember to take some clean towels by the poolside before I left. <laughs> yeah. Sit down, pool scum. Yeah. Seems the real truth is, Mr. Quinn wasn't the only one with indiscretions. See, Mrs. Quinn did happen to do a few odd jobs, but they were all in the bedroom. <laughs> uh, but when Mrs. Quinn said that she would no longer require his extracurricular activity, he became immediately furious mm -hmm. and got so drunk but still slipped off with Mrs. Quinn from time to time at the party. Aaron Quinn noticed his indecent behavior and planned to, planned to throw him out the party, but got distracted by Maria. Miss Quinn no, had the sorry. same hairdresser for years, Sylvia. Sylvia Shears became a close friend to the family of Mr. Quinn and Miss Quinn, until Sylvia became not too fond of Mr. Quinn. Yeah, it's true. I really didn't care for that bastard. Trudy left him to death. No pun intended, rest his soul. I would never put on to her that I thought she was a jerk. But when she told me she suspected him of having an affair, it really <laughs> pissed me off. That slut nanny needs a buck kick, too. <laughs> I noticed he gave her a gift, so... When she wasn't looking, I took it. A beautiful scarf. That slut didn't deserve it, so I kept it for myself. But like I said, I really didn't care for him, but I would never kill him. <laughs> Bastard indeed. Sylvia could not care for Mr. Quinn because he had scolded her. See, Sylvia definitely <coughs> wanted an affair with Mr. Quinn. Mr. Quinn teased her and lured her on until he just broke her heart, just like that hole. Aaron never really noticed Sylvia walking around the party with a scarf around her neck, but Sylvia was seen walking around with a scarf around her neck, closing her eyes as she smelt it. That's creepy, she is. Oh, well, these what? are our suspects. Mm. Now you will have 10 minutes intermission. Yippee. Take this time to get some refreshments at the cafe. More importantly, though, take a look at your case files. Review and look at the details closely because the clues are in there. And you'll have an opportunity to ask questions of the suspects when you return. So, no writing in the case files. Write your answers and your questions to the suspects in your notebooks. And remember, ask yes or no questions. Your 10 minutes begins now. 